So let me step back into the presentation slides. Thank you for participating on this. Um, and where am I? There we are. Okay. And I'm going to wrap up a little bit on two topics. Um, one is on systems thinking. And this uh, repeats some of the stuff, but if you watch the video from last year, I just want to be clear on, on some of the systems thinking concepts that are pretty basic because um, people often know what it is. So, first definition systems thinking as a perspective on parts, holes, and their relations. Um, the reason that systems thinking is pretty general is everything in our world is parts and holes. And we don't often think about it, so um, a long time ago I was running business strategy workshops in China, I had a translator doing this sort of stuff. They understand parts and holes. The Greeks understand parts and holes. It's, you know, it's philosophically pretty uh, good for a long time. Some of the terms that are used, um, you have the idea of function, which is contribution of the part to the whole. So you have a function, which is generally a non-living system. You have a role, which is a living system, where a person has a role in the system. And you have the containing whole. So when we're talking about mobile as a service, I was saying, well, what, where does that fit into a bigger system? And we're talking about um, relocation as a, relocating, right? Um, how does relocating fit with other things? If we're talking about mobility as a service, so I'm just I'm brainstorming at this point, I'm making stuff up as I go along. Does mobility as a service help tourism? So if people don't have a destination in mind, is there a mobility to service where it'd be like a, um, uh, a guiding service or you know, something like this, someone comes to town, they sign up and you can get an automated guide that would automatically do this. Uh, I remember that when I was, um, quite a few years ago, I used to go on cycling vacations and my friend suggested we go to Holland. And when you go to Holland, they used to have, I don't know if they still do, I assume they still have the, the VVV, so it's part of the Tourism Bureau. And you go and you say, I want to have a bike, bike vacation. They ask you, how many towns do you want to go to and how hard do you want it to be? How, how far do you want to bike every day? And so I was like, oh, I want to bike, you know, 20 miles a day and we want to go to three places. And so they would arrange all the hotels and the rental bike and everything. They move your luggage for you, and you show up on the first day, you get on the bike, you have your luggage, the van goes ahead of you, you bike for the day, you end up at a hotel, you have dinner, you have breakfast, you get on the bike the next day, go. You know, could that be part of building a service? So there's a containing hole, and what happens is that when you think about the containing hole, you start thinking across systems. So I just started this, and we started talking about mobility as a system, but there's a bigger system that mobility is in, and I started talking about a bike <coughs> service that was on the side. And the reason you want to do this is that you want to think bigger, not smaller. You want to think, in, like people tend to think inside of the system, but you start to think what the bigger systems come along. So function, contribution of the part of the whole. The second part, structure is an arrangement in space. And we've been talking about building architecture. People normally think about building architecture as arrangement in space. That's pretty common. Process is an arrangement in time. That's a little harder to think about because you have this change over time. But systems are essentially usually these three things. Uh, we look at the system as a whole, there is a behavior. Now here's a skill testing question that's kind of abstract. Which comes first? Process or structure? Okay. Which comes first, process or structure? This is a very abstract question. <laughs> yes. Process. Process. Why does process come first? If you think about this picture and if this uh, puzzle will turn this way first, it it doesn't the part B doesn't turn that other side. You're right. Process comes first, and I'll tell you why. If you look at a mountain, 
People think a mountain is structure, but the mountain also changes. So a structure is the slowest changing process ever. We think of mountains as structure, but mountain is actually process. It's just that we don't see it in our lifetime. We don't see it change. It took me about eight years in the system of society before I got that question. And then it's like, oh, is it obvious? I don't know, it's not obvious. So when, that's why when you actually do stuff, like when you do services, services are more process oriented because every time you do a service, it generally serves something different. When you do products, they're more structurally oriented because they do the same thing over and over again. So there's all these sort of hidden things that you get when you're inside of, of system thinking and thinking about um, services and, and products. In authentic system thinking, synthesis precedes analysis and the containing whole is appreciated. Synthesis is putting things together. Analysis is taking things apart. We were talking about parts and wholes. Synthesis is putting things together. Design thinking actually does a lot of that. Designing is about putting things together. Science does a lot of analysis. It takes things apart. And the question when you deal with someone, and I meet a lot of people who claim to be system thinkers, and I talk to them and I go, wow, it's really a really bad system thinker. Um, Russ Acoff says that a good system thinker, synthesis precedes analysis. Number one, identify the containing whole system of which the thing to be explained is a part. So we're talking about mobility as a system, mobility as a service. If I'm interested in mobility as a service as a system, I'm actually less concerned about what mobility as a service is. I'm interested in the environment around mobility as a service. Like, why is it that people are even interested in mobility as a service? There must be something in the bigger system that's not being satisfied. After you've done that, explain the behavior or properties of the containing whole. So, what is the containing whole for mobility as a service? He's had, to have, he's had time to think about this, and now he's going to think about it. He has to write his thesis. What is the containing whole for mobility as a service? I'm thinking that there's different perspectives, and from that point, using the different perspectives, you would have different containing holes. But Okay, how are uh, you? Give me some of them. Yeah, well, some well, transportation system. You have, looking at the environment, you would have, you would see cars parked on the street 95% of the time, like I said, already multiple times here. Yeah. Okay, uh, so, so, so that's, there's, that, there's that's the behavior that we're looking at, and some, okay. then we have people thinking about how do we solve that. Okay, so, so the contain, one of the containing systems for mobility as a service is vehicle ownership system. So we, we would not have a problem if uh, uh, if you have a free bike system, anyone can pick up a bike anytime and then drop it off anytime and that was working fine, then you probably, you might not need that sort of mobility to service then because the containing hole would already have contained it, already, already have solved the problem. Okay. Any other ones you want to try or? Okay, so, so it, it's interesting and challenging to think about the containing system. This is, that's the fundamental of system thinking, it's the hardest part. Uh, the usual example when I talk about this is uh, if you talk about the, uh, a tram system, in Toronto we have streetcars, we have a tram system here. If, you, if the trams are not coming frequently enough, it doesn't really help to yell at the driver. The people you want to yell at are the people in City Hall who haven't given you enough budget so you can drive you could have more frequent tram uh, service. There's a containing whole of government and cities around the tram system. Yes, you go inside, you can say there's one bad driver, but most of the time I find that people in the service system are actually trying to do the right thing within the constraints they have. And, and they're constrained by all the other factors. So if they had more money, if you had a nuclear system and you gave them more money, they could do more. So the containing system involved. So the third part is then explain the behavior properly, the thing to be explained in terms of role or function within the containing hole. That's when you start digging into the system and understanding it. So you work from the containing hole into the system. 
That's why in the pattern language, we had both the containing system and the contained system. We're looking bigger and smaller at the same time. Actually, for mobility as a service, another containing system would be the urban planning system. How do you plan cities? Because if they were more tightly fitted, you might have just, you would maybe walk everywhere. Good. Okay. Now this other side, which is pan theory, and JP and I can ask you about it, just talking about it, we recognize them now. There's this idea uh, from ecology that you go through these cycles, and uh, the usual way I describe these is like startup companies. So you start off with resources with high potential and low connectedness. So this is kind of like up here in the alpha stage where it is a garage shop sort of operation, garage shop business. They go through a cycle where it comes down for exploitation. The potential goes down and the connectedness is not yet together. So they form and they start off um, in, the, um, in, in the beginning of what's called exploitation phase. So it goes from being a hobby to being a little business it scales up, it grows, you start getting a lot of business, uh, and you enter into conservation phase when you've got a stable business. It has connected, it's now a complex system, as opposed to being a complicated system, because this side is more complicated, this side is more complex. And then eventually the system dies, because as a complicated system, it runs out of resources, and it's released, and it comes back through. And, if, and then you, then people, the company shuts down, the people get released, they go back to the beginning and starting up new businesses. So there's this idea of panarchy, which is used, and the way they do it, you can think about this in terms of nature. Uh, in nature, what happens is you start off with a seed, uh, initially it gets planted in, it starts growing into a small um, mangrove or in the bushes, stuff like that. It goes up, gets into the tall trees, you get into the forest, and there's a fire, and then all collapses and it goes back into um, seeds and getting started all over again. They have these two ideas though, which is the larger and slower system and the smaller and faster system. <coughs> uh, and the idea of remember and revolt. So when the, the um, forest breaks down, the forest burns down, how does nature regenerate the forest again? It has what's called these remember functions, so it has large and slow things happening. You've got things happening in the soil, um, you've got nature, you've got uh, animals coming into the area and bringing in seeds. You've got very slow things that outside of the system before that come into effect. So nature remembers how that forest was created the first time and it recreates it. You have small and fast things happening uh, within it. So you may have um, little, uh, there are some times when a forest restarts, there are certain types of plants that grow very quickly because the trees can't recover that quickly. So you'll get grasses growing and things like that that are small and fast and eventually the larger scale thing will come back. But the, 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 uh, the central idea and um, but the part that people need to take away from panarchy theory is that when you're thinking about a service system, there are multiple stable states. So you could have mobility of the system done as a single, single business, a single person running the business, or you could scale it up into a big enterprise. It's not that there's just one way of doing it. And scale makes a difference. When you're designing a system, you can design a small system, or you can design a big system. If you're doing pattern language, what happens if you have a, now a large number of patterns in the catalog? A small system may not need all the patterns. So if we're building a, a house, the idea of a balcony is in the pattern language. But if you're building a one-room house, the idea of balcony is I don't need a balcony. So there's different scales that come to play in the system and different things that will come to play in different patterns. 
And when you scale something up, there's a legacy of growth. And when you scale something down or when it collapses, there's also these things happen. So the, the, the trick here, and I'm thinking again about when you get down to the basic ideas of systems, we tend to think about structure because we can see structure. And we can see the world, but it's still harder for us to see changes over time. And so thinking about process thinking and thinking about things that grow and then die, thinking about living systems is a different frame. It takes a little bit of adjustment to get to, but uh, eventually you'll end up talking about the services and how the services change over time. That you'll have to start off with a small service, provide some basic features, then it grows, you add more features, you find out what customers want, you get split into multiple systems, you can be complicated, you can be complex. All these sorts of things come into play. <laughs> okay, um, we have eight minutes left. I'm going to talk a little bit. I'm going to skip this one actually. I'm going to talk about um, errors. I'm going to skip the stuff. I'm going to talk about errors because this is something I've learned fairly uh, recently. Because you're about to, if you are going to create a system or you're going to change a system, one of the things you're going to deal with is whether you're you're making a mistake when you do an intervention there's a possibility to make a mistake. And it's good to make a mistake because you can learn from those mistakes. But there are different types of errors. Um, how many people know about type one and type two errors? Statistics, do this? Okay. In statistics, what happens is that you get a sample of data and you say it represents the world. So um, I'm the prof, who the teacher that talks about um, drug samples, drug, drug testing. So you're going to bring a new drug to market. You do testing on it, and there's very, very errors you can make because when you test a drug, you, you're taking it along populations of people. You're trying to make sure it doesn't kill people. Does the drug actually work or does it not work? So you do a statistical test, and you get the first type of error, which is a false positive. Okay, I say this drug works. It could be that the drug actually doesn't work. But when you're actually doing the testing, it works. That's a false positive. That's what he calls a type one error. The type two <coughs> error is false negative, which is I'm doing drug testing, the drug doesn't work. That's why I test say the drug doesn't work. But actually the drug does work. You've now made an error because the drug works, but your testing shows it doesn't work. When you go into problem solving, this is generally the sort of type you get, the type one error and the type two error. Because you've already defined the problem, and then you're saying, does the solution solve the problem or not? And you can't know the whole world. This is why we do research and we do science. It's because you're testing against it. There's a type three error, which is what he calls tricking ourselves. Unintentional error is solving the wrong problem precisely. I'm going to take mobility as a service as an example right now. Are you solving a problem that needs to be solved? We can do mobility as a service. Is it a problem worth solving? I don't know. And if we actually start working on mobility as a service and it's not a problem worth solving, we're tricking ourselves. We've made a mistake because we're asking the wrong questions. That's why in the pattern form is posed as questions, not as statements or assertions. Because we want to make sure that we're asking the right questions. There is, however, a type 4 error, tricking ourselves, intentional error to solving the wrong problems. This is through malice, ideology, over dullness, self-righteousness, or wrongdoing. This comes from um, the original uh, thing at the top, which if they, and this is Thomas Pinchon, if they get you, if they get you asking the wrong questions, they don't have to worry about the answers. This is the Donald Trump phenomenon. Donald Trump is actually quite interesting in that he's controlling because uh, crooked Hillary, the email server. People stop focusing on Donald Trump and they're focused on something else. And so uh, I'm really interested in this because um, as we look at services and we spend time when we start working on service systems, the first question you would ask is, is the service system worth working on? 
uh, and why are we doing this? So we need to reflect about whether it is the right thing to be working on. Is it worth spending our lives, our careers, our time on these sorts of things, on the services that we're on the services um, And it could be that someone is trying to do something for a particular reason, tricking us. We have a Donald Trump. We have, um, there's, a, there's a very short book, um, I don't know if people see this book called On Bullshit. There's a, there's a good book called On Bullshit. It's actually, this is an actual philosophical work. It's been published and it's been cited. And the purpose of bullshit, this is type, they cause us great type four errors. Is we focus on the wrong thing. Now it's one thing to be focused on the wrong thing because we actually started working on something that was genuine, that we, have, we were authentic to what we actually thought was worth doing. It's another thing about being distracted away from the issues that are at hand. So I think that I'm going to wrap up now. Um, oh, let me do this. Um, this is at the end. Um, so there are books. There is, uh, I recommend go to the library, look at the pattern language. Um, there's actually multiple books associated with it. The pattern language is the structures on which buildings are constructed. The Thailand's way of building is the <coughs> process for, for creating the buildings. And the Oregon experiment was the urban plan, the, the site plan for the University of Oregon, where he tried to do all sorts of things. So this is kind of in the 1970s range. Um, for those of you who want some light reading, um, I recommend this, uh, this book, which is his last book. It actually incorporates all the stuff. So, so take a look at the stuff in the library. But you might want to actually read this book because it talks about trying to build a high school in Japan with the Japanese Yakuza and getting resistant from the old systems. It's kind of entertaining. But it's actually, to me, this is the most valuable book is Christopher Alexander because in the early work he's he's prescribing do this and we'll save the world and then in this book he actually is trying to save the world and it's like okay it's not quite like it is when you write the books right so I found this one uh, quite entertaining so with that um, I think we'll stop and I'll be around for a little while but um, you guys have a full afternoon there's this stuff is the academic stuff uh, from the um, uh, from the conference that you can always look at, and you can read the research paper. Uh, thank you for your time, and I hope that you find pattern language useful. Uh, if you do use it, please contact me because I'm trying to figure out if this stuff works or doesn't work. Like this is the advantage and disadvantage of being a leading <coughs> knowledge, right? So you guys now have a session on how to practically use pattern language in a service system. No one else has done this. Um, so uh, look forward to hearing from you some more. Thank you.